Okay, we're back again for part two on the SDS. And we're just going to show you a few more of the uh, parameters here and explain kind of what they do. So we're back in gauge mode here right now. We're going to fast scroll to get into some of the other parameters. Here's RPM fuel. Here's manifold pressure. And here's the engine temp values. So what these do, these control enrichment during warm-up. So here's the engine temperature here. Here's the value. So at 115 degrees Fahrenheit on the engine temperature, you're putting in this much fuel. If the engine was too lean at that point, you could look at your wideband, or if the engine was stumbling, you could add a bunch of fuel here. And again, there's 32 of these. The values should normally get larger as the engine is cooler. So you can see the values are larger here. And they get quite large when it's when the engine temperature is well down here. So we're adding a lot of fuel initially when the engine is very cold. As the engine warms up, you can see the values get lower and lower. And typically, I'm just going to fast scroll here. Once the engine gets up to you know, somewhere close to operating temperature, probably around, uh, probably around here, we'd actually have about zero. So we don't want to add any extra fuel when the engine's warmed up. So this is kind of like a choke in a carburetor, if you can understand it that way. We're going to fast scroll to another set of ranges here. This is uh, ignition retard and advance. This is on uh, ignition systems only. So we can uh, advance or retard the timing here. So right now it's showing zero retard at 14.6 inches. If we wanted to retard the timing for some reason there, we can increment or decrement that. So we can retard timing there. We can also advance timing. And again, you've got these uh, all through the manifold pressure ranges, there's 64 of these values, so you can advance or retard the timing anywhere you want in the range, very flexible. And here's basic RPM ignition timing. This is easy to understand, 4400 RPM, our total RPM timing will be 26 degrees. If that's too much, again we can take it down, if it's too little we can take it up with the plus or minus buttons here. And uh, on aircraft, most aircraft systems, this is programmable every 100 RPM. On automotive systems, typically 250 RPM ranges. Here's the start values. So start values control the enrichment during cranking and the first few seconds of running. So typically, here's a very hot engine temperature. We wouldn't put in any fuel there because it doesn't need it. As the engine gets cooler, take it down to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, very cold. We have to put in an awful lot of fuel to get the engine running, so the value is quite large here. Again, you can change that to whatever you want. If you need even more fuel, increase it. If, you, if it's too much, if it chokes and there's black smoke pouring out of it on startup, you want to reduce that quite a bit. And We'll go back to gauge mode here and we'll go through some of the special parameters. These are all to the right of gauge mode. So there's gauge 4 there. If we keep going right, here's the magnet scene, not scene. And this is uh, something you'd want to set up before you try cranking the engine. You want to turn the engine slowly by hand and you should be able to see these change from not scene to scene as each magnet passes by. And you want them to be seen for about three to four degrees of crankshaft rotation. That shows that uh, the magnet's well aligned with the crank sensor right in the middle of the sensor. Here's LCD brightness. So we can uh, brighten this up, dim it down just by incrementing and decrementing. Contrast, same thing. And here we can select. Uh, 
gauge button function, whether we want the gauge to return to gauge 1 or gauge 4. So gauge 4 is mainly used for, for tuning once you've got the engine running there. So once we uh, hit the gauge button, here it'll return to, to gauge 4. Hit the gauge button again, it'll go back to where it was, it'll remember where it was. Maybe we want to return to gauge 1 when we press the gauge button. And we'll show you that. Now we're back in gauge 1. And now we're back to uh, the gauge select button there, window. It's cranking ignition retard. If for some reason you had a uh, high compression engine, maybe not such a good starter, you might have to add some more retard. There's already some built into the system. If you wanted more retard only during cranking, you could put some more in there to prevent starter kickbacks. These are just spare windows for future use. Here's the uh, O2 type selection window. So we can use several different types of uh, wide bands and narrow band sensors here. As you can see, if we press the plus button, we can select all different types. Here's a standard narrow band. Here's an AEM. Again, just select whatever type of sensor you've got there. That will provide the correct voltage scale for the computer so it reads properly in the gauge modes and data logging modes. I'm going to skip over some of these. There's so many of them here. I just want to keep these videos, you know, within a, a short span of topics. Here's the rev limit fuel cut. So we can set this in 100 RPM increments. This is just to protect the engine in case of uh, automotive. You want to protect it just from over revving. Uh, generally, you know, too low a gear. In aircraft, maybe we want to set this 100 RPM above what the propeller governor is set at, or perhaps uh, protect it if the prop parted company with the aircraft or had a blade separation, something like that. So we can set this wherever we want. And it will basically shut the fuel right off until the engine drops back below that RPM set point. Here's values lock. This is pretty important. You want to have uh, values lock off, otherwise you won't be able to do any programming. Select it with the plus button. Now it's on. If I hit any of the buttons here, it wouldn't change the values because the value lock is engaged. It's just uh, kind of an anti-tampering thing to make sure somebody doesn't play with your values. These are closed loop settings generally not used in aircraft. Magnet position. So this is used when you initially time the engine. Um, you take out a connect a timing light and check what your ignition timing was. If the ignition timing was not as you've got programmed in the computer in the ignition timing value section, you can increment or decrement this. Each time you change this value one degree, you'll see the timing shift one degree with the timing light. And what you want to do is to change this value until the timing light agrees with what you've got programmed at that RPM you're checking it at. So if you've got 10 degrees programmed in at 1000 RPM and it read 11 degrees, you could take this down to 90. That would change the timing one degree. This is just an initial one-time calibration. Once it's calibrated, whatever the programmer reads for ignition timing will be correct. Very important step to do this. If you don't do it, your timing could be off 2, 5, 10 degrees. You might think you've got 30 degrees total, but you've actually got 40, and you could uh, damage the engine through detonation. So this is an important initial step. Start cycles. Start cycles controls how long the start function lasts. So basically, when the engine fires up the first time, on an initial start, this controls the amount of time that enrichment lasts before it goes on to the engine temp values, which controls warm-up during, controls enrichment during warm-up, sorry. So larger value here means the start cycles will last longer before it reverts to engine temperature. Here's the start values here. Again, 
we have very large values at very cold temperatures. This puts this is the amount of fuel that goes in at this temperature. As the engine warms up, the values get lower, of course. And this is used only once when the engine is cranking. It's going to use this value at 52 degrees Fahrenheit engine temperature. It's going to use this value here. And these uh, start cycles generally just last about five to seven seconds, and then they'll time out. And it, the engine temp values will take over from there for the start for uh, warm up enrichment. RPM ignition, this is pretty straightforward. 1000 RPM, we have 10 degrees if we want more than that. We have 20 degrees now. You do that through all the RPM ranges. And uh, that covers kind of some of the basic important stuff. We'll probably cover some more of the uh, finer detail things in uh, another video. Thank you for watching.